Today we're going to show you the difference between rifles and handguns and how they also work differently. We will shoot all these weapons. Today, we'll tell you which resistant class could be the right one for your situation. The lowest rating is BR1, it corresponds to a .22 long rifle and is one of the few that we do not have here today. It goes on to the resistant class BR2, which is equivalent to the 9mm. Then, resistant class BR3 would then be the Magnum 357 and it goes on to the Magnum 44. These are the handguns and that is the resistant class BR4. Next are the rifles. That's a completely different world. Here the resistant class BR5 with the caliber 556 by 45 millimeters. Then again, one higher, the resistant class BR6, in this case the NATO G3 rifle with the caliber 7.62 by 51 millimeters. This gun here with armor piercing ammunition corresponds to the resistant class BR7, which is the highest. And we have something that does serious damage, a shotgun, which corresponds to the resistant class SG-1 and SG-2, here with the ammunition 1270. Uh, we'll also shoot this soon. And here we have two special features that are not included in the standard, but are important. The Kalashnikov AK-47 with a caliber 7.62 by 39 millimeters. And here we have a sniper rifle with a caliber 338 Magnum. You can look forward to that, it'll be spectacular. But now the most important, we have the two experts here and I'm super super glad that an old friend of mine, Frank, is here with us today. Yes, about me. I have been dealing with shooting, training and weapons for over 22 years. I've worked many years for the civilian sector, but also with authorities and for some special units in Germany, Europe, uh, among others, but also in the US. Uh, yes. So, a real pro. And Thomas, thank you very much for being here. Thomas, you brought us all these wonderful guns here. Thomas is the owner of Schmeisser and produces rifles like this one? Yes, that's right. We are, my name is Thomas Hoff, I am owner of the company Schmeisser and I've been active in this industry for over 25 years. In Krefeld we have a nice company where then these M4s AR-15 are manufactured for the civilian market but of course also for the interested governments. We're going to shoot all these guns. You have something to look forward to. Frank, which weapon are we going to start with? Yes, we'll start with the Glock 17. That's a pistol, exactly, you can show it. Uh, it uses a caliber, it's 9mm, so 9 by 19 or 9 para. This is actually the usual police ammunition, which is also used here in Germany and Europe. Um, in the meantime, the Americans do also use 9mm almost exclusively, except for a few units that use caliber 40 S and W. Okay, to show you the force of these guns, we chose watermelons. I would take my gun then. The bullet entered here at around 350 meters per second and blew the melon apart quite a bit as you can see. In the second one we also see quite the entrance wound. Bullet entry and bullet exit. This is where the projectile came out again. Now we see here in the third melon it goes in here 
And there it goes out again. Then the fourth. Bullet hole, yes. And it also no longer has so much energy. The melon has already been pushed apart. So much energy has dissipated at this particular point. By the way, here you can see very clearly that the bullet entrance is smaller than the exit. Fifth entry hole and also an exit hole. Here it went down. Yes, the holes are getting smaller too. Wow, we've already gone through five melons. Yes. This is the sixth. Here you can see it goes in, but... No exit hole? No exit hole. This means the projectile is stuck somewhere in here. Well, we already have some good penetrating power with a 9mm full metal jacket. It's already got a significant amount of energy, absolutely. We put a fresh melon here in front. Why? I would really like to see what happens with the first melon and with the other melons. We'll just see quite the penetrating power. The next resistant class is BR-3. Yes. This is the caliber Magnum 357. Exactly. We have decided to leave them out. We simply don't have enough watermelons. We would not have thought that we'd get through six melons with the 9mm. So this just means we'll go one rating higher, which is the resistant class BR-4, a true powerhouse, the Magnum 44. Frank, the recoil of the 44 Magnum compared to the 9mm, how much stronger is it? There uh, we have about 450 joules, depending on the cartridge, with the uh, 44 Magnum. The energy goes up to 1200 joules. Uh, so left felt in the hand, it's easily the double. And you said that the 9mm has a bullet velocity of... 350 meters per second. Uh, here we are at around 450 meters per second. Let's see what the melon thinks. Sounds good. We can already see that the first one has flown apart again. It has disintegrated into its component, so it's also broken. We can't do anything with it anymore. The next one also, uh, if we have a look at it, has, yes, it has a significant entry hole. And so I think we can skip several of others. As we can see here, the destructive force is significantly more powerful than with the 9mm. This is the exit shot. This is the first, second, third, the fifth that has been probably shredded. Keep in mind, we, we have a higher velocity and a much heavier projectile. This simply leads to a higher destruction. Here is also another one inside. Uh, that's where it went in. Do you, do you see an exit? Yes. I don't know. Yeah. We're going to hold this up to the camera. Take a look. Do you see the exit hole here? Yeah. It's getting a bit smaller. Yes. And now the second to last melon entrance. And here also again the exit hole. And by the last melon also entry and exit holes. It passed through all the melons and then still pressed a few millimeters into the wooden plate here. These are two sheets of wood, two centimeters each. So in total, four centimeters thick, but still very dangerous. Yes, still dangerous. Not something you'd want flying your way. Boom! <laughs> I felt quite a difference compared to the 9mm. Now let's go to the rifles. Exactly. Uh, here we have an AR-15 uh, or M4, also sometimes known as the M16 from the mode of operation. And here we have the caliber 223 or 556. Uh, we have a deployment distance, one where I can deliver an accurate hit with full confidence. Um, I would estimate around the 300 meters. The danger zone where such a bullet can fly it, if it is fired at an ideal angle is around the four kilometers and it will still be absolutely deadly uh, around that distance so you know it's very fun we wanted to shoot this gun but we didn't expect the magnum 44 to mistreat the melons in such a way so we have to save some melons that means we skip this one and go straight to the caliber 7.62 by 51 exactly and here too our energy output increases which is also reflected in the resistance classes that you mentioned a uh, precise and lethal shot can be made from about 500 to 600 meters let's see what happens Okay, I think 
we don't really have to count the melons. I think we can take a look to the wooden board right here. The bullet, it was deflected. Yes, the bullet probably got deflected here. We just have the exit hole from the uh, 4 4 here. Here is the 4 4. There's also the 4 4. Uh, this. There's also an exit hole. Here's, there's two. That means the projectile changed direction during its flight? Yes, through. And shot out here yeah. to the side? Yes, with a high probability. So we will do the test again in a minute and then we'll see what happens. Yes. Let's try again. As in this. Hey, nice hit! No exit shot, the bullet has been deflected again. Yes, so let's just take another shot directly at the wooden plate to see how the exit hole looks. The caliber 7.62 by 51 is a completely different thing. In terms of functionality and range, it's simply not comparable with handguns. Yes, exactly. Let's start the third attempt. That means we will shoot directly at the wooden plank. Uh, we leave out the melons because they have deviated our projectile twice now. Oh, I did hit the melon after all. Let's go look. So here we now have a very clear exit hole. What uh, we can see here very nicely, the projectile has rolled on itself, uh, hit the top edge of the one melon, thus the bullet rolled over on itself and entered the wooden wall sideways. In spite of the bullet striking sideways, we can still see an enormous exit wound at the back, so the energy is easily enough for a wooden wall. That's, that's just myth and reality. There's no point in hiding behind this. So what do we do now, Frank? Yes, now we'll make two shots with the 7.62 times 39 the classic AK-47 ammunition, and we'll give one again through the melon and one directly through the wall as well. Um, and that's exactly what we will do with the next weapon. If there is something left of the melons, then we can do that. Okay, good. Let's start. Yep. So similar to the 308, we have a deflection of the bullet here into the wood. So here we just have fragments of the bullet that went into the wood. And quite a watermelon salad we have here, huh? Do you see the exit hole? You can see it here. It was just a straight shot. You can see here from the entrance that it's, it's only a small hole, but here it disintegrates a, a, a little more. Since the projectile above has rolled on itself, we can see a much larger entry and exit holes. Okay, so dangerous weapon, widely used weapon, but we still have to explain something very important now. The AK-47 does not appear in the European standard for bulletproof materials, but it's the most widespread weapon in the world and quite dangerous, as we have seen. Yeah, so here we have ammunition that is from very old stocks, uh, partly from the stocks of the Warsaw Treaty states. Uh, this is an iron core that simply presses out of this entire projectile onto a target, um, and then only this small core with a low cross-section actually penetrates the, the target. Now, we have in contrast to standard ammunition, but with a special iron core, what we call AP for armor piercing, but that is subject to... The War Weapons Control Act, uh, that we can unfortunately not shoot today, because this ammunition is subject to certain laws and we are not even allowed to handle it. Where does the Kalashnikov rank now? If we think back to the European standards, when talking about glass and using, let's say, the standard ammunition of the former Warsaw Pact states, we could estimate... In between here. So, between BR5 and BR6. And when we shoot armor-piercing ammunition... Then we're here, at least in close range, at around 100 meters, I would say. That's going in the direction of the highest resistant class, BR-7. You've got something else for us, right? Yes, we have another shotgun here, a semi-automatic shotgun, 
uh, that can fire a wide variety of projectiles. So we have shotgun shells here, uh, where th a large projectile can be fired through the barrel. Uh, but we also have buckshot. So we have 9mm projectiles in there, and they can also have a very large effect. That means um, you can say, I mean, this is not a hunting rifle, but can the Absolutely. ammunition also be fired from a hunting rifle? Yeah. These ones here. If I hunt rabbits, uh, would I use buckshot? You'll be left with buckshot. Just think about what you have in your hand. It's not really suitable for rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there is not much left there. No, 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 and we don't want to do that. Okay, now it's going to get really intense again. We'll shoot a shotgun with a projectile 1270, which is according to the standard for bulletproof glass, resistant class SG1 if you shoot it once, and resistant class SG2 if you shoot it three times. Yes, I can uh, load those right away. The only correction I have to make is that these are the 1276 and are actually one level stronger again. A little bit more violent than in the standards. Than the 1270, exactly. In a moment we'll see the effect of these shotgun projectiles, which are sometimes also used during hunting. Uh, often. Hey, Frank, <laughs> where's the melon? <laughs> the melon's gone. So you see the huge energy of the bullet and it's heavy. It flies with um, how many meters per second? So here we comfortably have over 400 meters per second. Uh, it's a hunting projectile which is clearly intended for further distances. So even up to 100 meters you can create a very large effect on the target. As you can see from these melons here on the floor. Well, the melons are completely gone now. I think we have to clean up a little bit. Here we have two large holes. And in the back, of course, a large exit hole. The bullet also tore out a little bit of the wood. It was a good shot. <laughs> Great, now you know everything about the European standards, but that's not enough. You also need to think of your personal situation. For example, where is your house located? Or do you sit right behind your windows or at a distance away? And now we want to show you two different scenarios. We'll start with the difference between spall and no spall. No spall means that if someone shoots at the glass, there will be no glass splinters coming off behind it. But there are also glass panes that have spall on the protection side. For example, where I, in theory, would be standing. And the outgoing glass splinters are quite sharp, kind of like tiny knives. And they can break away at high speeds with high amount of energy. They can also fly very far. They can fly 10, 20, 30 meters. They're dangerous. Frank, I think you can go on forever about this. Yes. Um, yeah, so on, on the one hand we had a car shooting course here yesterday and glass was also pushed away by the muzzle which then also went in my direction at a very high speed. Fortunately I had protected myself properly but on the other hand I've already met people who were injured by glass splinters in war operations or who have inhaled them. Something you should not underestimate. Okay, here we go. Let's start with the first sheet of glass. There is no spoil, as expected. We shot at the target a bit more often here to provoke the spoil, but no bullet went through, so the balloon has not burst because a projectile went through, but because of the glass splinters that came off. Look here. No, so we also have four different bullet holes here, which of course pushed a lot of glass away. And the energy of the outgoing splinters should not be underestimated. If I have a living situation or an office situation where I'm sitting close behind the window, in case of doubt, always go for no spall. Okay, apart from spall or no spall, I again want to make very clear the great difference between handguns 
and rifles. For example, would it be quite smart to protect your penthouse from handguns if the next house is like 50 or 100 meters away? Probably not. And here's why. Frank, you said you can still hit a target with a handgun from 50 meters? Yeah, I think we'll manage something. We've prepared a sheet of glass for you. Yes, but we are now. Wait a minute. Come back a bit. Uh, we are uh, now at 100 meters. I would try from here. Wow. Damn. Most people would already pee their pants at 50 meters. Well, we'll see. Professionals can do it. Okay. I think Frank needs to concentrate. Yes, I think he'll need a second. Frank, what kind of gun are you using? Glock 17. Hit! Wow! <laughs> I think we have to go and have a look. I don't believe it. So, all is good. But still, 50 50, 100 meters, that's fine. I can live with that. You can have a look. You can actually see this quite nicely. Not only the impact, but we can see that it's not so strong anymore. If we normally shoot with a 9mm from a distance of 10, 20, 30 meters, then the glass would be shattered way more. And here we see the impact has much less energy. And that is what Frank said. The projectile loses the energy over long distances and handguns at 10, 20 or 30 meters will have significantly more energy than from your impressive distance. But we've also prepared something else. Now we come to the last shot of the day and again a very special rifle. We'll take a sniper shot from a long distance. But first I want to say why are we doing this? Handguns are for short distances and rifles are for long distances and of course also for short distances. A pistol or a revolver is usually accurate at 10, 20, 30 or maybe also 50 meters. Yeah, 50 is already a challenge for most people. People. We have just seen the shot of Frank at 100. Almost no one will manage that. There are only a few people in Germany who can hit this target with a Glock 17 at 100 meters. Do you know anyone else who could have done that on the first shot? Mm. <laughs> Yourself? Exactly. <laughs> you brought something very special? Yes, this is the new Lux DevTech, caliber 338 Lapua Magnum. And what's special is, this gun is really the first of its kind. Because we picked it up on Monday from the testing range and it's freshly tested and fired and, as I said, the very first one that exists now. Here for comparison, that is caliber 338 Lapua Magnum. So in metric terms that will be about 8.6 by 70 millimeters. Huge! For comparison, here is the caliber 7.62 by 51. Look how small it looks in comparison. The glass sheet is placed at a distance of 300 meters. Can you hit it from 300 meters? Well, I would also hit it from 600 or 1000 meters. With this rifle, for sure. Okay, the glass is made to withstand the caliber 7.62. And I'm pretty sure it can handle this caliber as well. If you manage to hit the target. Let's get started. Let's go. Hey, Simone, look, I have to I have to show you something. Laurent, the second cameraman, he just started the camera behind the glass. And here he comes. With a bike. <laughs> One shot, one hit. Nothing. Frank. Ah, quality product. All good. That was your shot from 300 meters. First shot was a hit. You also said, no surprise, 
Except for Frank, yes. <laughs> the glass is fine. No penetration, no splintering. It could have withstood a bit more. How many shots do you think? Definitely, at least one or two more. Although the glass is designed for a smaller caliber, we shot with the larger caliber. 338 La Pua Magnum and you can also see that the effect on the target is completely different. More cracks in the glass than with the 9mm shot. We explain to you what the different resistant classes mean in practice. We try to show you different weapons and their effects. We also shot some watermelons. We try to explain the great difference between handguns and rifles. If you want to know what else we've been doing at the shooting range, you can check out our other videos. I'll put the links in the description. And if you want to know what we will do with this historical weapon, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.